Hey everyone, it's Scott from startmedia.com. Today we'll be covering how to optimize the Sahifa theme by Thai Labs. So Sahifa theme is a premium theme found on ThemeForest. I made another video covering everything there is to know about the theme, going to its options, its sub options, and what I liked about it. And I'll include a link to that in the description below. But for this video, we're gonna talk about how to make it load faster because this is the default imported theme right here. The only modification I really made was to make it in dark mode because I frankly like the dark mode more. And as you can see, there are glaring performance issues. We're gonna see, see how to get this thing up to stuff and improve its load time. Some things to keep in mind, this is on a shared SiteGround server, but the caching is not running. So the 628 milliseconds on the TTFB will have to be improved. And there are some glaring performance issues that we're gonna to have to look at. And we're gonna have to talk about one of the features in the theme that doesn't seem to do quite what it claims. But before we get there, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to start optimizing. So the first thing I always like to do is I like to compress the images. It's a good starting point and there's no better plugin than UImage image optimizer to handle that. We're gonna install it and then we're gonna click activate. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna compress all the images at a lossless compression, which is the default setting. We're gonna click scan the on unoptimized images. It's gonna check the entire library and it's gonna tell there's 900 images and we're gonna run, go ahead and have that compressed. So that's gonna take care of this first issue for us. Now we notice that we have a lot of Facebook warnings coming up and I'm wondering where are the Facebook issues coming up? There's a Thai Labs Facebook item that was pre-imported for me. So when I look at the code, I can tell that under the Facebook item that there were, that it's clearly embedded by an iframe. An iframe embed is actually good news for us because it means that we can lazy load it. And if I remember the theme settings, it mentioned that there was lazy loading for the theme, but it looks like none of the images are truly being lazy loaded. So what we'll wanna do is we'll have to take out basically both of the issues at the same go. We're gonna have to go to plugins, add new, and we're gonna look up lazy load. And we're gonna find ourselves the lazy load optimized images plugin. We're gonna install and activate it. Once we've installed and activate the plugin, we're gonna go ahead and go to lazy load and we're going to enable the first three options. Once the options are enabled and the images are nearly compressed, we're gonna wait for the images to finish compressing and we're gonna rerun the test to see where we sit. As you can see now, this, this is more like a lazy loaded image. It tells us that the loading attribute lazy was included, but it also tells us that it, the source attribute has been replaced. One thing we're gonna make sure is that when we add the lazy load functionality that nothing appeared broken and it looks like functionality more or less remained. It looks like this video right here was unavailable, which is quite odd, but I have a feeling that it was always doing that. If we go to the YouTube, if we look for that YouTube code, we'll see if there was an issue with the code itself. It looks like it was a subscribe widget. So it looks like the lazy load functionality is breaking it. So we'll have to uncheck that first functionality for the, the thumbnail. Once we reload it, it looks like it works. So we'll have to definitely file a bug report on that issue. It looks like the lazy load functionality and the compression are now set up. So we're gonna run a retest. This was our before, we're gonna be running another test right now. So now that we've cleared up the first major issues, the images being too large and the lack of lazy loading for images and iframes, we can then look at the other major performance issues in this test. There's still a lot of JS that isn't being deferred and the TTFB wasn't too bad. It looks like there were some image, the banners as well that were redirecting to the SSL version, which we could likely fix. But it looks like we're already up from the 6.7 seconds to the 2.6 second range and our scores are dramatically better. We're gonna go ahead and we're going to integrate a, the cache enabler plugin as well as auto-optimize. I've made two videos that go in depth on both of these plugins. I will include them in the description below. We're gonna install both of them simultaneously and then we're gonna just install activate one at a time. Activate cache enabler. This will allow us to cache the HTML bear page to accelerate the download speed and to reduce the white screen that they see on load up. We're gonna to go to the settings and we're just gonna make sure that we clear the cache if a new post has been published we're gonna enable pre-compression of pages and we're gonna clear on, pay on a plugin being added. We're gonna hit save and then we're gonna to go to auto-optimize. Once we get to auto-optimize, this is where we're gonna to want to improve the settings for the theme. So we're gonna go through and enable the default recommended items that I include, aggregate JS files, the aggregate CSS files, aggregate inline CSS is not 
a solid option for this theme because there is a lot of dynamic CSS on a per category basis. We're going to enable data URIs for background images and we're going to optimize our HTML code. We're going to hit save and empty cache, but we're not quite done in this section. We're also going to go to the extra and we're going to choose to load our Google fonts with preload in the header and include font display swap. We're then going to remove the emojis and remove query strings from static resources. This will cut out the requests from the emojis, but it, it will remove the versioning on our CSS and JS files to improve cacheability. Once we've done so, we should see our code be a lot nicer. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and we're going to reload the HTML on, on the view, and we're just going to make sure that there's no JS errors being output by anything that we've added. So we're just going to scroll down into our console, and we're going to make sure, okay, there's one image that it looks like is loading insecurely. But outside of that, it looks like we're loading everything pretty well. We're going to go ahead and run another performance test to see where we sit. As you can see, we started around the 82 second ring, 82% with a 68 and a 6.7 second range. This was on the default. Depending on the content that you add, maybe if you add more subscribe widgets notably, you might notice that your site is a little bit slower. So now we're sitting at a 98% and 87% at around 1.6 seconds. It looks like the Sahifa banners are still loading with HTTPS, but they're not being rewritten. To help alleviate this issue, we're going to install another free plugin called Really Simple SSL. What this will do is it'll dynamically rewrite the assets for us to resolve the redirect issues. Install, activate. We're going to go ahead and activate it. And then we're just going to make sure that we have the insecure content fixer loaded. Yes, it is loaded. So now we're going to go to our cache enabler plugin and we're going to make sure we have the clear cache functionality and we're going to reload the test. If I'm correct, this should put us either at a 99 or a 100% of the test. And then we'll have to look at anything that's potentially remaining. Analyzing with YSloom, analyzing with PageSpeed, and it's generated the report. So now we're sitting at a 99 with the last real recommendation being to defer the parsing of JavaScript. The last item that's being loaded is jQuery, and jQuery is an interesting file that's difficult to improve upon because it tends to be dependent on other inline JavaScript. What we'll do is we'll attempt to remove jQuery, but I don't think it'll work. Once we've removed jQuery, we're going to rerun our test on the front end, and we do have some var various errors. So the theme's live search functionality is greatly dependent on jQuery being defined as is several other important details. Therefore, we cannot de defer jQuery without breaking the theme. Unfortunately, we could try to aggregate inline JavaScript, but some of this inline JavaScript is also dynamic, particularly the live search functionality because it declares the URL on every single search and on every single page. So we don't want to merge the inline JavaScript, but we can't, not, but we can't merge jQuery.js. The only other real options for improvement would be to add a CDN, either through CloudFront or a similar company, and that would improve your Y slow grade into the 95% range or so. The reduced DOM elements would simply recall, require us to remove additional elements on the page, such as the extra blogs or all the footer widgets or the complex menu structure. There's not much that we can do there. We could attempt to host the Google fonts locally, but from testing, I tend to find that it's faster to be loaded from the CDN. Otherwise, we started at a 6.7 second with a 1.73 megabyte page size and 114 requests. We got that up by increasing our page speed score 17%. Our Y slow score now sits <clears throat> at a, let's see, 19% higher. And then our fully loaded time is 4.3 seconds faster. Our page size is about a more than half of the half less, and our request count is almost a fifth of the way that it was. That is how you optimize the Sahifa theme for better performance. If you have any questions about this, you can feel free to ask me in the comments section below. If you're looking to have your website optimized by a professional, you can contact me on my website. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and goodbye.